Well, welcome to this short tutorial which is going to look at the basics of texture projection or texture mapping in Houdini. And this is also sometimes called UV mapping. And it's about how we can add detail and interest to our objects. Let me lay down a sphere. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to control click a camera. Let's zoom in a bit more. And then I'm going to add a light by control clicking as well. Now, if we render this, and let me create a render node, we can see that we're going to get a very boring result. It's just going to be a white sphere. And to create interest, we're going to need to vary the color of this sphere. And there are two ways of doing that. We can either apply a three-dimensional texture, or we can apply an image over the surface. A three-dimensional texture is a procedural texture which takes account of the position that we're shading in three-dimensional space and derives a color from that. And there are some of the shaders that come with Houdini which use this method, so let me demonstrate one of those. which is the blue marble shader. And I just drag and drop that onto my sphere. And then if we render, we should see that without any further adjustment, we get a reasonably interesting result. But only some textures can use the 3D method of applying a texture to an object. If you want a more general method, a method by which you can apply any image to determine the color of an object, then you're going to need to use texture coordinates. Let me just take this sphere and I'm going to make sure it's a polygon mesh and then I'm going to apply a different type of shader. I'm going to apply a basic surface shader. And the basic surface shader, like many which come with Houdini, has the ability to use a color map. That is to determine the basic color of the surface using an image. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to choose one of the images that comes as standard with Houdini, which is the mandrill picture. And it doesn't look like that texture has been added. It has now. So let's have a look and see what that looks like when we render. And we're getting a slightly weird result. It's going to take a moment to render. I'm, so I'm going to hit the pause button. And what we can see is that we're getting a different copy of the texture on every single one of our political polygonal faces. And we can see that more clearly if we flat wire shade this. We can see we've got a number of polygonal faces. And if we have a look at the render view, each of those is having a separate copy of the mandrel image on it. So why are we getting all those separate copies of the mandrel image? Well, that's because the default way of applying an image to a polygonal face is to use what are called the inherent texture coordinates of the polygon. And that basically maps the corners of the polygon onto a one-dimensional square. And the upshot is that every single polygon gets a different copy of the image. And that's very rarely what you want. So what you need to do is attach some attributes to your polygon which will tell the shader more precisely which bits of the image you want where on your sphere. So let's now do that. I'm going to go into my sphere and I'm going to select all of the faces like so. And then 
I'm going to lay down a UV project node. And I'm going to change the projection method to polar. And what we should see is that our mandrel picture is now being projected. And we can see this here on the OpenGL view. It's being projected onto the sphere in a way which means that it has a single image across the whole sphere. There's a whole shelf dedicated to tools to allow you to determine exactly how your image will relate to the points on your object. And I'm going to discuss a few of these, but I'm not going to discuss a couple of them. I'm not really going to discuss UV pelt, and I'm not really going to discuss UV brush. And that's because there's a good tutorial on the SideFX website which covers the use of these tools. Let's look a bit more detail at what our UV project node has actually done. Let's go into a details view. And here at the vertex level, I can see that I have a new set of attributes, UV0, UV1, and UV2. We can ignore UV2 for the moment, but UV0 and UV1 are, if you like, the X and Y coordinates of the bit of the image that's associated with a particular vertex. We can also display the UV coordinate details in this view here. I'm going to go on to wireframe mode and I'm going to bring up display options. Now our UVs as you saw were attached to our vertices so here in the vertex options I need to select UV chords. And we can now see that we have some very detailed information on each point and here for example we can see that this point is associated with the bit of the image that's 0.25 and 0.33 are its coordinates. Let me turn off the display again. The other thing we would notice about our UV project node is it gives us a choice of projecting or adding UV attributes either to the points of our object or to the vertices. Now vertices only exist for poly polygonal objects. They don't exist, for example, for NURBS surfaces. Uh, for NURBS you would have to use points. Now today I'm not going to go into the issue of adding texture coordinates to a NURBS surface, though you can in fact do that quite easily using these tools. I'm going to concentrate instead on polygonal surfaces. And in order to demonstrate a bit more clearly the difference between applying UV coordinates to points and vertices, I'm going to create a tube. And let's make it into a polygonal tube. And I'm going to give it end caps. Let's go back to flat shaded. And I'm going to use a text projection. And at the moment I'm only going to add UV coordinates to the faces of the tube which are around the edge. So let's press S to enter selection mode and 4 to enter primitive selection mode and the shift R to rotate our little arrow round and L which is going to select all of the faces around the side of our cylinder. Let me now hit 2 to convert that selection into points and then tab and UV project. Now because we've got a point group selected the UV projection is instead of being associated with vertices going to be applied to points. We can see there now, I don't want the default projection type, which is orthographic, which is just going to project straight downwards. What I want is cylindrical. And we can see, if you look carefully, that there is now a cylinder drawn around our object. It's not facing in the right direction. This cylinder appears to be on the wrong Z axis, and actually we want it pointing upwards. 
There are two ways we can deal with that. Uh, you can just about make out here that there are some handles. And the handles allow us to move this blue outline uh, and thus change the way the texture coordinates are going to be added to our object. What I want is this uh, sphere, this cylinder rather, matching the outline of the cylinder here. If I hit Y, then we get a different set of controls, and I can use them to twist the cylinder around and align it with our object. There is another way to do this, which is to use the initialize button, and I think I want the ZX plane for my cylinder. And there we are. We can see that that now is pretty much coincident with my cylinder. Now I want to have a look and see what this looks like with a texture attached. I can use a render to do that using uh, the shader that we laid down earlier. Another method is to use UV Quick Shade. And UV Quick Shade allows you to add a texture, and I'm going to go for the mandrel picture again. Allows you to add a texture without actually adding a shader to your object. And we can see here that we've got the mandrel texture. We're going to add another light to our scene so that we can see the other side of this, or in fact, let's control click another distant light. That should give us plenty of light so that we can see our mandrel picture. And maybe one, one more light. So now we've got light all the way around. And we can see our mandrel picture. And something odd is happening here. We're getting a nicely applied mandrel picture all the way around here. And then we're getting a complete mandrel picture at the back here. And we can perhaps see this even more clearly if I change this mandrel picture to the UV color map, which are these squares. And we can see we're getting a complete copy of that map here. So what's going on? Well, we've applied our texture coordinates to points. And that's all very well around here, where this point of the texture that, uh, that this polygon needs here is obviously the same as the point there. But when we get to the seam, when this texture is wrapping around, we're getting here, this is probably, this bit of the picture probably has a coordinate of zero. And as it goes around, it's going to increase, 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 until at this end, we're getting nearer to 1. And the problem is, we're sharing points here. So there can only be one value of u, v for each point. This means the value of u and v here has to be the same as the value of u and v for this polygon here. And then when you get a seam here, what should be happening is that this should be tending towards 1 on this side. But on this side, we're starting from 0. So this point here, between this point and this point, is changing from something near 1 here, because it's gone all the way around here and reached 1. But this is 0. So between here, 0 and 1, we're getting the full range of the texture repeated. And that's an inevitable problem when you're using points as the basis for your projection. So let's do that again. I'm going to select uh, my tube, delete my UV project, hit S for select a face, loop around. Now this time I'm going to leave it with polygons selected or primitives selected. And I'm going to use UV project. I could just use the texture shelf tool up here just as well, but uh, the tab menu works in the same way. And we can see what's happened now is that it's automatically recognized that we have polygons and selected vertices. And now, uh, let's see, we need to change this to cylindrical, and we need to initialize it to the ZX plane. 
And then when we put the display fragger on our quick shade mode and go round, we should see that that odd repetition of the texture has disappeared. And the reason for that, of course, as you'll know if you've seen the tutorial that I did on polygons, is that while two polygons may share a point, and any attribute that's attached to that point will have to have the same value for this polygon and for this one, each polygon has a unique vertex at each corner. So if we apply our texture coordinates to the vertices, then from the point of view of this polygon, the texture coordinate here, in this physical position in space, might be different than the texture coordinate for this polygon looking at exactly the same point. The upshot of this is that whenever you're applying texture coordinates to polygonal objects, it's always a good idea to use vertex projection, because it will avoid that difficult issue with the seam that we saw earlier. And as you'll have probably have guessed already, I've also demonstrated another aspect of creating texture coordinates here, which is that you don't need to create texture coordinates for all of your faces or your primitives at once. Here we're using a cylindrical protection projection to create texture coordinates all the way around the outside of our object, but we haven't yet assigned any texture coordinates to the top and the bottom, and that's why the texture is not showing. Now a cylindrical projection isn't going to be very good for this flat surface at the top, but a orthographic projection is going to work fine. So let me go into selection mode, and if you'll recall the workflow is that we select four for polygonal faces, select, I'm going to select the top of the cylinder and shift select the bottom. It's not working. Let's try it again. There we are. So we've now got the top and bottom selected and this time let's use the shelf tool and I'm going to UV project. And we can see straight away that we've got, except there's no light underneath, uh, so let's uh, again add another light we can now see that on the top and the bottom we've got textures. And we could adjust the size of these textures by using uh, making sure that our excuse me, let's find our tube. If I select this hit enter then we should get and it's quite hard to see this blue rectangle which represents our texture projection and I can use the handles to move that blue rectangle around or in this case what I'd quite like to do hit Y and that should give us the let me switch to wireframe mode for a second that should give us there we are some handles to allow us to change the size of the texture. So I'm going to increase the size until it's a bit more like the size of this one. So the workflow is pretty simple. Select the polygons you want to apply the texture to, then add a UV project and use the handles here or the initialize tab or indeed these controls to position the texture as you would want.